Let me welcome you to St. Bartholomew's Church in the city of Baltimore. For those of you who are here in the pew, and also those of you who are joining us over the internet. If you are in that latter category, please be sure to download the bulletin so that you can follow us along in the service. I'm Bishop Eloff. I'm the assisting bishop of the Diocese of Maryland. And Florence Ledyard, who is our rector, will be returning in two weeks from her vacation. Please rise as you are able. Let us join in the opening hymn, or at least join in humming the opening hymn. Only the cantors should be singing and all of us need to be masked, which is, um, come we who know the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
God would be with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, we may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel in Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us, he protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed, and the Lord drove out before us all the peoples. And the Amorites who lived in the land, therefore, all, therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. A reading from Ephesians. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day. And having done everything to stand firm, stand before and fasten the belt 
of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always preserve in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So whosoever eats me will, have, will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven not like that which your ancestors ate when they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard this, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you, there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe. And who was the one that would betray him? And he said, For this reason I have told you, that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. 
the gospel of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Paul writes to us and to the Ephesians, put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And then he goes on to talk about the fact that we are fighting against principalities and powers, those in authority. Well, I used to poo-poo passages like this when I was much younger because I didn't see that much evil in the world and I really thought that the devil, talking about the devil, was kind of backing up into a medieval context or even more ancient context. Who is the devil? And I really believe that uh, people were making progress and were really being able, especially Christians, to battle down evil and to keep it in its place. But over the years, I have taken the devil and evil so much more seriously. And I realize that we see the devil's work and evil in our world all about us. I was tempted to spend some time on some of the evil that we see in the Taliban in Afghanistan. It's sad that Islam as a religion is very similar to Christianity, very similar in its accent on love and the importance of loving one's neighbor. But the Taliban and some of the other er areas of really uh, radical Islam have departed to a great degree from their religious roots and have a more evil rendition of what in fact was in the beginning a very wholesome religious set of views. But I'd rather concentrate with you on evil and the devil as we hear it and see it in our own culture. I think the first person I heard use the phrase alternative truths was Kellyanne Conway in an interview that she gave about a month and a half into President Trump's term. I was pleased at the time that the press took her on and said, what do you mean alternative truths? Alternative truths are falsehoods. Well, she didn't really back up a bit, but she didn't continue to use the phrase much. But I see that rearing its ugly head around us in so many ways. I think of it as the battle we are now in, in COVID time, the battle to get people to be vaccinated. I find it mind boggling that people are resistant to being vaccinated. And it's because they have bought into, many of them, an alternative reality. Now, the reality takes different forms. There are people who argue, I shouldn't take this because I don't know what's in it. Well, I'm old enough to remember when Salk invented the polio vaccine. I was a teenager, and I don't remember anyone saying, I'm not going to get vaccinated because I don't know what's in it. I still don't know what is in any of the vaccines I have received or any of the vaccines which we require our children to have before they can have a public education. It doesn't distress me over much because I do know that vaccines protect us from dangerous illnesses. And in this time where COVID is spreading, especially because so many people have not been vaccinated, we need to say this is an evil thought, an evil practice based on an alternative reality that somehow 
these vaccines will harm us. Even more ridiculous, it seems to me, are those who argue against wearing masks. I had a heated debate with someone at the Catonsville Y a while back about this, who didn't seem to feel that the Y could require him to wear a mask. And as I tried to explain to him that this had a lot to do with his responsibility for others, in addition to protecting himself, he said, well, it was an impingement on his personal freedoms. How ridiculous that is. Try going 90 miles an hour for a long time on Edmondson Avenue and see if someone doesn't arrest you and take you into custody because it is against the law for you to go that fast. Who among us is not aware that our personal freedoms are constantly being hedged by something that is more important, and that is the good of the community. You can't get behind the wheel of a car legally unless you've been trained and passed certain tests. You can't own a gun in this country unless you have gone through background checks and proved that you know how to use a gun. There are so many things that impinge upon our personal freedoms. Why this ridiculousness about mask wearing. As somebody who has gotten very used to mask wearing, I find I walk around the house for an hour sometimes before I realize, oh, I don't need to wear my mask in the house. I can take it off. Any of you who are medical personnel know that you get very used to a mask. You've been wearing them for years. Masks make a difference. And the alternative reality that these are somehow an impingement on our personal freedoms are a lie that need to be confronted. Lying is the basis of all of the evil that Jesus is against. We get this sense because his temptations in the wilderness before he came out to do his ministry were all predicated on lies. The devil trying to convince him of an unreality or perhaps an alternative reality and his rejecting of those things. Jesus, in a different part of John's gospel, says, and our hymn just before the sermon reminds us, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Truth is extremely important in Christian faith, and falsehood is the product of the devil and the demonic. We see this in the big lie in our country and the way in which a whole group of people buy into an alternative reality. Now, I don't think that the vast majority of people who buy into that alternative reality believe it, but they support it because they understand that as a minority, they are losing control of what is happening in this country. They would like to turn the clock back to the 50s or even before when white people in America pretty much called all the shots and ruled. And they are uncomfortable by the increasing evidence of the fact that in a decade, the majority of people in this country will be persons of color and not white people. They want to tenaciously hold on to their white power and their white authority and are uncomfortable that LGBTQ persons have been widely accepted in the church and in our society as a whole. These are minority views, but the only way they can have political power is to buy into this distorted reality, which is predicated on lies and is the product of demonic minds. There are politicians in our country who have clearly sold their soul to the devil. And we need to be clear about this. I'm not making a political statement. I'm making a religious statement. There are people who have sold their souls to the devil. And that would include the governors of Florida and Texas, who although they have been 
vaccinated encourage other people not to be vaccinated and are now insisting that people not wear masks to the danger of many, many children and many adults as the variant becomes stronger on the backs of the fact that so few people have been vaccinated or are wearing masks. We need to be more bold about saying, this is evil. This is not a political point of view. This is not a particular uh, area of the country. This is simply false, based on false information with the desire to retain power for a minority that no longer is in touch with where Jesus is moving in our world. Fortunately, Paul gives us a clear indication of how we can battle those demons. And he talks about particular pieces of armor. And the first thing he says is, put on the belt of truth. Again, the centrality of truth for our religious faith is extremely important. The belt of truth, which holds us together. It also, in speaking the truth, reminds us that Christ is in us and with us as we do so. So we need to not be afraid. And the second item is the breastplate of righteousness. And righteousness is right behavior. Put on the breastplate of right behavior. Why? Because the breastplate protects the heart and the other vital organs. And in the ancient world, and even in our own time, we equate the heart to the place where love dwells. And love is central for Christian living. And therefore, to protect your heart, to protect your ability to do right, put on the breastplate that will protect that heart and the love that you wish to give. Then he talks about our shoes, which are the proclamation of the gospel. It's telling the truth, doing the right thing, loving your neighbor. These are the ways in which we put these shoes on so that we can walk all over God's creation, telling the truth, speaking the truth, living the truth. And then there's the shield of faith. We do not stand alone. We are part of a religious faith. Christ stands with us. Our brothers and sisters in Christ stand with us. No one is beyond is walking alone in this. No one is a loner. And the last piece of armor is the helmet of salvation. The helmet is designed to protect your brain. Keep your mind on Jesus. Train your mind to ask the rather twite question, what would Jesus do under the circumstances? Do not give in to cynicism or apathy or simply to be chicken-hearted and to be afraid to speak up in the face of evil. And finally, after all of that armor, which is defensive, we have something offensive, the sword of the spirit, which is based on scripture. The sword of the spirit is the scripture as we understand it and live into it. It is a sword that allows us to cut through to the marrow of the situation and then act on it. It's a sword that divides evil from good. It's a sword which is used to be able to proclaim the good news of God in Christ. So our battle is not a passive one. Our battle is an offensive one. It's hard, I admit, in family or in neighborhood or even in church communities to take issue with people who are espousing any of these false realities. But it's going to be so important for the life of the church and the life of our nation. Already in the eyes of many people in the press, Christianity is represented by a narrow-minded group of people who are often one issue oriented, be it abortion or turning back the clock on LGBTQ 
rights, or be it um, very conservative views in other ways. These are not Christians. We need to be clear that just because somebody says, I'm a Christian, the way we know people are Christian is by the way they behave. If you don't see anything Christian in their behavior, they're not a Christian. It doesn't matter what you believe, it's what changes your belief makes in your personhood. How have you changed as a result of Jesus Christ? And how will you continue to change? We need to be able to battle for the soul of the church so that Christianity isn't just as it is by many people in our culture, simply dismissed. It's no secret to me why we live in a largely secular culture. It's because Christians haven't been strong enough in speaking the truth of our own faith and the ways in which it can transform and does transform people. People here, right in this church, who have been transformed by the love of God. People who are watching on the internet who have been transformed. Our job is to go out with the sword and with all that armor and begin to transform our world. Democracy is also under threat. I'm certainly not the first person to talk about this, but I am a person who talks about it not from a political point of view, but from a particularly religious point of view. I'm sadly well aware of that America has never lived in to the ideals which we have espoused from our beginning. And there is much that needs to be corrected here in America, but I am also absolutely convinced that we are the world's best hope of a form of government that can enable people to progress and be equal. If we lose this struggle to to be a democratic nation here, we will also lose the platforms which we've gained in recent time to try to create a level playing field, to try to break down the barriers of separation and segregation, cultural, societal, class, and racial discriminations. We can build in this place a Christian democracy, but it won't happen unless we are more vehement about speaking out, of taking issue when we hear people talk about things that we know to be simply false, to stand up for what we believe and for risk the fact that some of them will simply reject us. The Christian faith in Paul's time was very tiny and very weak. And yet, the difference that it made in the first century had everything to do with the power with which people lived and spoke the truth. Put on the whole armor of God and stand. Amen. Please rise as you are able, and let us join in saying together the historic Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. made to our people, wanting to serve our God and trusting that we will be protected in time of trial and preserved in time of evil, we bring our needs and longings into the divine presence. That you may bless our church and raise up in our midst men and women to proclaim your gospel, celebrate your sacraments, and minister to those who long for your saving help, we pray to you, good and faithful God. God, hear our prayer. That you may bless our world and deliver into it the hands of leaders who trust in your providence. Serve others in your name and work to establish a reign of justice and peace. We pray to you, good and faithful God. God, hear our prayer that you may bless our homes so they may be free from hatred, filled with love, and hospitable to those who are lonely, isolated, sick, or poor. We pray to you, good and faithful God, God, hear our prayer. That you may bless all who make covenantal promises to one another, that in their love for one another, they mirror the life, the love, that Christ has for the church. We pray to you, good and faithful God, that you may bless those who share your life with others, physicians who seek to bring health where there is sickness, educators to seek to bring wisdom where there is ignorance, and artists who seek to bring beauty where there is squalor. We pray to you, good and faithful God, that you may hear the prayers of all in any need, remembering Lucy Marshall, Vince Marsiglia, Donna Cartwright, Janet Churchill, Shirley Nathan Pulliam, Wyveta Dupree, Lillian Thomas, Celia Vismail, Ray Ziegler, Larry Brown, Sandra Da Silva, Young Sam, Mary Warfield, Jim Wright, Kathleen DeVale, David McClellan, Dana Shevachevsky, Melody T Pitts, Tim Wolf, Kathy Brookman, Brad Schlegel, Margaret Schotto, Kate Henshaw, Celeste Thurston, Corinne Bowmaker, Peter Lee, Michelle Pearson, Irene Hardy, Pat Shelton, Pauline Hu, Andrea Giampetro Meyer, Bonnie Koch, Connie Lee, 40 West Assistance and Referral Center Clients, Hope Harbor Partner Families, those affected by the coronavirus, the people of Afghanistan, especially women and girls who live in fear, the people of Haiti who have suffered great loss of life and property, and any others we name at this time. Don DeVale. Don Vigil. Don Alistair. 
Leo. Warren Pulliam Sr. and Jr. Pat Hines. Valerie Nathan. Nathan <laughs> Arnold. Paris Lee. Jacob Bruce Page, Wilson. Denise Matai. Mama Lisa Jones. Susan My Clark. Children, Zachary and Zoe Shibashevsky. And the Ogdeluz family. Yari Blanks. We pray to you, good and faithful God, God, God you. that we recognize that all good gifts come from you. We give thanks for our many blessings, remembering the 53rd wedding anniversary of Patty and Peter Griffin, our 40th wedding anniversary of me, Bill and Leah Culp, the birthday of Mary Warfield, the birth on August 13th of Isaac James Schroeder, son of former parishioners Kelsey and Jamie Schroeder, brother of Hazel, Lillian, and Marion Schroeder, and grandson of Claudia and Joe Twist, and any others we name at this time. Our freedoms. The 100th birthday of Eunice Hunt. Oh. Birthday of John DeVale and Catherine House. The 97th birthday of Dick Parker. Yes. Yeah. yeah. For me, something like. We pray to you, good and faithful God. God, hear your prayer. That you may bless those who have gone before us in faith, remembering those we name at this time. Jane Barrett. Rebecca and Tony Grayson. Auntie Molly. Mary Justin Neal. That they may abide in peace and pray for us who continue on life's journey. We pray to you, good and faithful God. God hear. Yeah. All good and merciful God, you indeed are faithful to the covenant you have made with your people. May, your, may you hear our prayers as we prepare to enter into a renewal of that covenant by celebrating the mystery of your son's death and resurrection. We make this prayer through him, Jesus Christ the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the power of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Kneeling or standing, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Peace to everyone at Peace, everybody. Peace to everybody. Peace, Peace everybody. Peace, 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 Peace to the Lord. Peace to the Lord. Peace to the Lord. the Lord be with you. Peace to the Lord. Peace to everybody. Peace to everyone. Peace to everyone.
Peace. Everyone, Peace. excellent, excellent sermon. One, two, Peace three. Peace. 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 Excellent sermon. Peace. Excellent sermon. Peace. Everybody. Peace of the Lord. Peace to everybody. I love you and miss you. Hi, Carol. Peace, Bonnie. Peace, Bonnie. Peace, Bonnie. Peace, everyone. Hi. Oh, there you are. Didn't Peace, see you, but you. Peace, Peace everyone. I didn't say it during. Good. parent. The uh, announcements are in your bulletin beginning on page 16. It's a very busy week coming up. There's a lot to do in many ways in which you can become involved and serve. Um, in particular, uh, 40 West needs two additional volunteers. If that time meets your schedule on Mondays, your help would be most appreciated. Take up, take out is coming up on September 4th. For those of you who would like to have the Eucharist at home, please come by on September 4th between 1130 and 1230 and you can pick up your takeout Eucharist. On the following day, the September 5th, we'll have the backpack blessing and blessing of educators because school season is upon us. And of course, the flea market will be coming up very soon. And I bring you treasures from the flea market to share. Please don't think that people just give us their cast offs and their hand me downs. We get lovely treasures at the flea market. This is a cross stitch matted and framed cross. My understanding is it comes from the collection of Jean and Alex stores as they were downsizing they gifted this lovely item to the flea market. Now, if you want this, you'll have to come and shop early because this is on my list to buy, okay? This is a lovely print, an original painting on celluloid, actually used in the Walt Disney production of Little Hiawatha. We actually have two items of this type. Grammy Daphne, Grampy Tom, I know you're watching. Wouldn't this look lovely on the bedroom wall of little Jackson? Come early, shop at the flea market. <laughs> now, a couple of years ago, we got some lovely collection of soup terrines at the flea market. They were beautiful. One was white and shaped like a swan. Another was yellow and shaped like a pumpkin. We had about six or seven beautiful soup terrines. So a woman comes along and she's admiring the collection. And so I ask, are you in the market for a soup terrine? And she says, no, not really. But that one there, and she points to a particular item, that one is not a soup terrine. Oh, I ask, what is it? And she says, it's a chamber pot. <laughs> So I Googled the item and she was correct and moved it off the table. So as you're clearing out your closet, bring us all your items, bring us your dishes, your chamber pots, everything is welcome at the flea market except furniture this year. And there is also a particular need at the flea market that Celeste will share with you. Thank you. So with Audible and Kindles and all of those lovely streaming services that we have today, we are inundated with people handing over books. And those books are way too many to fit in the one small space that we have. So we're grateful for the incredible donation of, of all of these books coming in from the community. But now what we're trying to do is be green 
and think about the other spaces in the community that could use some of the excess. So we have bags of books downstairs, and I just want to bring it to your attention that there are things like little libraries that in, are in most neighborhoods these days that are looking for books to read and, and children's books. There are some um, grocery stores, Mom's Organic and Green Valley Marketplace that have bookshelves at either end when you walk in that are accepting free donations of books. And then there are book um, bins that are at all the public libraries. Um, so we have bags downstairs, and Flo tells me the best way to do this is say, I would like to see the hands of five people that would take a couple of bags of books from downstairs and look for places where you can take them. Now you can certainly go to places like Goodwill and Salvation Army and Purple Heart. They still take books as well. But I just wanted to um, elevate some of the places that are in our own communities that are looking for free books so that people that may be in need, that, that need a book to read or to introduce a child or help a child learn to read, I wanted to bring some of those to mind. Thank you very much. So where are the five hands? Flo tells me this is the best way to do this. One, two, three. I need two more. Do I have a four and a five? Four. One more. No? Five. Okay. Thank you very much. And pass it along. As we go through each week, there will be bags of books down there. It's very helpful for us to get those out in the community. Thank you very much. Hello. You're asking yourself why I'm dressed like this, other than I'm a fool who has no shame. It's because the flea market is our cash cow. Yes. Every dollar, every single dollar that we make goes to outreach. It goes to promote the mission of the church in the community around us. And that's why we are so grateful for your donations, your help, everything. Uh, this year, I have been blessed with Debbie Wacker as a co-chairman and Steve Smith, who has also been so good in helping us with logistics. But I know there's a lot of doubt out there. People are saying, uh, that they have, they have concerns about the health, about people coming too close to them, or you know, we're moving backwards into a code orange, or so people are concerned. So they'd like to, you know, be able to shop at a time when there's no crowds and things like that. Yeah, that's a ticket. Actually, this is the ticket. It's the ticket to our pre-sale. Our pre-sale is the night before the flea market. It is Friday, September 10th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. We will have books, clothing, jewelry, notions, collectibles, electronics. If I'm forgetting anyone, I'm so, so very sorry. Oh, maybe a few other items. I'm so very sorry if I'm forgetting anyone, but I will have these tickets. They are $5 each. You can't miss me, right? You're, I'll be right outside and you can't miss me. How are you going to miss me? So, is everybody going to want to buy a ticket? Yeah? Okay, good. My, my mission is accomplished. Um, one more quick note. We are taking a large delivery of clothing tonight from Charity's Closet in Savage. And I will need as many hands as I can get 
on Wednesday in clothing to help sort those into the proper place, unbagging them, um, moving them around to different, you know, putting them on hangers, hanging them back up, things like that. And everything is labeled. We will be glad to show you what, where things go and what to do. I would be grateful for anyone who can show up that night. Thank you so much. Cash cow, tickets, pre-sale. Thank you, volunteers. I appreciate it. few weeks away, I am running out of ridiculous outfits. Ridiculous outfits. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> Thank you very much. You guys did a great job. <laughs> All things come of you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. Amen. Those of you who are in the church, uh, pretty much are standing if you're able. Um, those of you at home can decide what you're going to do about standing and sitting. We continue with our Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high, by whom you created all things, you laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst forth from the boom. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All, your, all you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so, as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings with all creation as we shout with joy.
Glory and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them by your hand of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Christ Jesus, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intended for us. We thank you on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant of my blood poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made. We acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine. that they may be for us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with the blessed Bartholomew and all your people into the joy of your true eternal home. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. As our Savior has caught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. For those of you who are at home for your agape meal or your bread, let us say this prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. You bring forth bread from the earth and make the risen Lord to be for us the bread of life. Grant that we who daily seek the bread which sustains our bodies may also hunger for the food of everlasting life. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And those of you who have something to drink, let us offer this prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, creator of the fruit of the vine. Grant that we who share this drink, which gladdens our hearts, may share forever the new life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Let us pray and say together on page 14. In union, O God, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where they may be, 
we offer you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. No matter how we have received you today in our meal of communion, whether by sacrament or otherwise, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts, cleanse and strengthen us in your grace, Holy Spirit, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us, now and always, wherever we are. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, minister to the afflicted, tell the truth, and live the truth. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.
supposed to move, please do so quietly. Otherwise, please stay and join in with us during the postlude. As we go forth into the world, refreshed and renewed, we reaffirm our commitment to our vision and mission as a congregation. We will, with God's help, be a vibrant faith community that is a blazing beacon of God's transforming love in the world. God is calling us to take righteous risks. We accept this call and will respond by seeking and serving Christ in all people. Alleluia, alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Bill. You've made the cast of Anthony. 